Welcome to ADF TV. My name is Frank Impfius and I'm from the Oracle JDevelop and ADF product management team. In this session, we talk about region communication and especially we talk about the channel of communication between two sibling regions. The use cases that require such communication might include master data correlation between two regions or one region to trigger navigation in another or just to pass data into a region. The techniques that we have at hand for this include contextual events, a technique I introduced in a previous recording called Chaperone, which is a bean reference that we pass into a task flow, and of course a shared data control. Now let's have a look first at contextual events. Contextual events is what I would call a silver bullet. It can be used in all region communication directions, parent to region, region to parent, or region to region. It's a publish and subscribe mechanism on the binding layer. So that means every view that is exposed through a region on a page can participate in sending or receiving events. With the events, we send a payload. Now that could be a complex object or just a scalar value like a string or an integer. The publication of a contextual event is like in a tree where you, know, you have something creeping up a tree and then visiting all of the branches. So there's no one-to-one -one direct messaging. It's kind of a public subscription and public broadcasting of an event. Here are some examples. On the first slide, you see that the event is raised in region one. From here, the event goes up to its own page definition file, to its own binding container, to see if this event is mapped to a subscriber. If there's no subscriber found, it will go to its parent binding container, which now is the binding container of the parent view. If in this page definition file the developers designed a subscriber to this event, the event will be notified and will be sent to this subscriber. In our case, we have a sibling region, so that means the event now goes to the sibling region, and from there it continues bubbling up until it meets all of the regions that are active to a specific time. The receiver, so the subscriber, will then invoke a method on a data control or there's a technique if you want to go to ADF Architecture Square website which explains how you can have a generic data control set up as a subscriber, as an event receiver, to then deal with different payloads. The second example is the other way around. You see that in region 2 an event is raised and it's region 1 now responding to it. Again, on the page definition file that has the mapping, you will have to identify an event receiver, the subscriber, and the sender of an event, where the sender of an event could be a named sender, which typically is the case if both of the regions that are um, within a communication have the same parent, so that you can point to them, or you would use an asterisk, in which case we talk from a wildcard subscriber or actually a wildcard uh, producer in this case. The next sample shows a nested region. Now here the nested region raises an event and this event then bubbles up and reaches to region 1 where it could be handled. So you see that contextual events can go first of all into both directions plus it's a very powerful mechanism because it can reach many regions at one and you don't have to have a direct dependency through a bean injection or similar just to establish that communication. Well, when we talk about region communication, and we're not talking about a shared data control here, but when we talk about region communication, then what is true is that the use case matters. And I already mentioned that. Use case really matters. Because all of the techniques that we introduced, be it the parent to region communication, region to region communication, or the region to parent communication, all of these techniques alone could solve a problem but sometimes the composite of two options will solve a problem. And I have an example for this next. Remember the last recording where I talked about the bean reference that we inject into a task flow through the input parameter. 
and this allows the task flow to actually call out to the parent view, execute a method on it. Now for a specific use case where we want to have region-to-region -region communication working and if both of the regions share the same parent, then what I can do is we could do what I call ping-pong. So we could have a reference being injected to one of the regions. Now this would allow the region to call out to the parent view. The parent view now will receive the call in a method invocation and then is doing whatever it needs to do. In our case here, it will just add a parameter as an input parameter to another region and issue a PPR, a partial refresh, to refresh the whole region. However, it could do almost anything there. If there is a shared collection between the parent view and the region, it could just refresh the region after changing the, the data currency on the shared data control. So different techniques could be combined into the solution for a specific problem. And this is why the use case really matters here. So this is an example for the bean reference injection. And actually it shows you how you use a composite of different techniques to solve a particular problem. And remember what I said about dependency. It's not always bad to have a dependency between task flows. A task flow that is considered to be an implementation detail can have dependencies, in which case it doesn't need to be accessed in a generic manner. Only those task flows that you expose as top-level task flows and that you consider to be used standalone, only those need to be isolated and need to be loosely coupled. The rest, there can be any assumption made. The only assumption you're not allowed to do is any assumption about availability of an object in the session flow because that is risky. However, all the others, if it's an implementation detail, is fair enough. Okay, it's the last recording of all of this region interaction pattern, so time to resume what we looked at. Well, we looked at a parent to region communication, and here we identify several patterns. To share data control, contextual events would work, input parameters, after which you would gen then uh, do a partial refresh. We do have the communication between a region and a parent flow for which we can use again a shared data control, contextual events, but then the reference injection where we allow the bean to invoke a method on the parent view manage bean. And then in this session we talked about region to region communication. And here what we could use share data control, contextual events and the bean reference injection as a composite.